I'm Travis Montague, co-founder and CEO of Group Black and CEO of Holler. In this series of Conversation Nation, I meet with individuals accelerating cultural change and creating massive social impact. Marjorie Hernandez is a multi-hyphenate individual. She truly understands the incredible opportunities that emerge when the world of Web3 collides with creative forms of innovation. As co-founder of Luxo, she's a true pioneer in bringing sustainability to the world of emerging technology. Marjorie, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm hanging out with you guys. So, Tell everybody a little bit more about what you do. I'm an entrepreneur. I like building things. I come up with ideas and then just build them. I'm extremely passionate about the future. So that's kind of like where my mind is always at. Yeah. So it's, for me, sometimes it's difficult to be present, like because I'm always like trying to thinking about what's coming. And I just love love building things. I think being a, a venture builder in this time is like one of the most exciting things one can do. And there's so much that needs to be built in this kind of like new iteration of the internet and the vision of the metaverse and Web3. There's so much to be built. That is like such an exciting time to to be part of. So I'm going to ask you about like your experience and journey with Web3, but before that, you had a incredible journey with E&Y, right? Yeah. Uh, talk, talk, talk to me about that. Like yeah. how, like you, clearly you've been about innovation for a long time. We'd love to I hear. Have. I studied architecture. I'm a trained architect. And then I did my second master's degree in Germany around media and art. And then I started working in all different kinds of things, like working with brands and artists and stuff, doing strategy, doing brand experience. Along the way, I discovered Bitcoin and, you know, became a of blockchain technology. was really passionate about that as well, but it was primarily a hobby. And then eventually I was asked to join EY and to build their innovation lab for the, the German speaking region. And the reason why I was asked to do that is as an architect and as a designer, they perceived me as a diverge thinker mm -hmm. and that I could come up with, with new ideas and that's, uh, they were right, that's what I did. I built this lab for them and quite rapidly it became a blockchain lab more than anything. Mm -hmm. And I didn't claim to be a blockchain expert by no means, but I was aware of blockchain tech. I was really part of the community, I was engaged. I was very close to the Ethereum Foundation and back then my boss was like, well, you are the only one who knows. So that makes you the expert in our eyes. Yeah. So you go so ahead. You've built this reputation of being an expert in Web3, yeah. right? which is incredible. What made you passionate or made you lean in so hard and dig into Web3 as yeah. much as you have? I think, you know, it's, it's the fact that we know it's going to be the next iteration of the web. It's inevitable. It's not going to be, it's gonna, not going to go away. But I think also growing up in Venezuela and witnessing since I was a small child, the failure of institutions and of the government and feeling so powerless, even though I was a child and I was, I was a passive spectator of, of the circumstances around me. Um, I was since a very long, young age, very aware of, of kind of like issues that so many people in the Western world are not aware of. Mm. And then it becomes really obvious that the blockchain technology is an answer to a lot of those problems. So I was like, from, from a personal perspective, very excited, from kind of like a more intellectual and professional perspective, also excited. And then also it's a, it's a massive financial opportunity for all of us because we, we are, this is it's a whole new, Almost the whole Web3 is a new reality dimension yeah. on top of our reality. So everything that we have built in the physical world, we will build in that world. So that's yeah. a big opportunity. Is there like one, if you had to say there's one thing about Web3.0 that you're most excited about, what would that thing be? It might sound like a cliche, but it's a lot about access. Because I always wonder, I mean, if we use virtual, if we use virtual Aplo as an example for many things, but in this case specifically, the fact that he was able to reach the audience that he reached and all of that is because his parents immigrated to the United States. It would have been very difficult for him to have that reach if he would have remained in Africa. Yeah. He will still be him. Yeah, yeah, Nothing yeah. will have changed besides maybe not so much closeness to, to, to sneaker culture in Chicago and all of that stuff, but he was still him. So I think we are missing in so much talent by the fact that we have centralized the access to the creative economies. And I think through Web3 and blockchain technology, we're going to open it up. Yeah. All of a sudden people on a, kind of like independently from the geopolitical location and their physical appearance and all of the bias that we have yep. to deal by, by the setup that we were given by nature, um, that doesn't play a role anymore. So that really excites me. So when I started Group Black with my co-founders, one of the things that we believed was that inclusion was yeah. one of the biggest, big, biggest business opportunities today. And one of the examples I used 
was Web3, right, in technology. And one of the core pillars of Web3 being economic inclusion of creators yeah. as part of that, that, that kind of core thesis that makes it so exciting. So when you say access, that to me like gets me really excited because it shows that there's ways to use technology and innovation to create that, to drive more inclusion in the world. 100%. In a way that it was, what in a centralized world, it's not as easily yeah. attainable. So your work is in this environment which is heavily dominated by white males, yes. right? And so how has that experience been for you? You've clearly have made an incredible space for yourself in, in this environment, but could you talk a little bit about that? I always, when I talk to, to my friends who are like, white males, I just trying to explain them how does it feel when you are just the one person who doesn't look like the others. Mm -hmm. When you enter a space, a conference room, where you are the only one who is different, right? And I, there's a feeling to it. It doesn't have to be a negative feeling, but there's just a feeling that, well, why there's no one else like me in this space? Mm -hmm. And as a female founder and Latina and all of the stuff that, that, that I identify and people identify me with, it goes as simple as, as when you are in a lounge in an airport and you're on a plane or, you know, you tend to be the only one of your kind. That can be difficult sometimes. I was always very unaware, honestly, quite frankly, until I was like 27, of the fact that people would perceive me different because I was a female and I was, I was really unaware. I thought like we are all the same, aren't we? I was really not aware of the biases that people were projecting on yeah. me. So I think I try to see the world that way and I act as if the world was like that. Yeah. And when, you know, sometimes you have to be very outspoken and put, you know, express yourself and gain your space. But I think um, sometimes pretending the world is fair, it can work. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything that you're excited about going forward with Web3 or what you think is on the horizon? I'm so excited about so many things because we are evolving and growing at such a fast pace. It's almost, I mean, I knew it was going to happen, but I think it was almost virtually impossible to predict that we were going to move this fast. I mean, I'm excited about my own companies and projects because I think we're doing a really good job. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to come with some updates and new launches that are going to make people very excited. But I think in general, I'm just very excited to see how all of these different pieces of technologies are coming together to materializing that vision of the future. And I think the way I like to describe it and the way I envision it is that we were all going to be in a collective, almost like a lucid dream in many ways, like we will live in this in this reality that is just juxtaposed between these digital experiences and these physical experiences. And we will be able to live our creativity at its max and we are, it's, the world is gonna be fantastic. So that makes me really excited when I think about it. Well, awesome, I'm super excited for you, Thank all the work you. that you're doing. Thank you for spending some time with us. Anytime. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the show.